Okay. Uh, first, I just want to thank you for tuning in to Who's Woodworking. Um, I appreciate your support. Uh, just watching this this video, and it's it's not dealing with a whole lot of complexity. Uh, we have some red oak, and it's three quarter inch stock and what we've done is we go ahead and take a uh, this is blue painters tape and it is six inches wide and we went ahead and put that over the red oak and we went ahead and centered that on the CNC machine and then after we got it centered we went ahead and um, cut out a treble clef so right now what we're doing is uh, we got a weeding tool here that I usually use with uh, um, our other devices that we have in the, in the shop. Um, we do some vinyl work every now and then with a cricket. So we're taking on this, this blue painter's tape is, is really, really nice too. I mean, it sticks really well. I've heard of people using um, Aura Mask uh, I have not used that product yet. I've been really happy with the Blue Painter's Tape. And this is the first time uh, that I've used Blue Painter's Tape for this type of project. Usually I just use it for um, securing my work to the CNC uh, spoil board. And I go ahead and put the tape on both the spoil board and the back of the of the workpiece and then we put uh, some CA glue down with some accelerant and then stick it down and it and it does a really fine job and so what uh, what the process is is once you get that um, all centered and CNC starts to cut it out it, it just cuts down to uh, its its regular depth we used a 60 degree V bit on this particular project and after it finishes it up we go ahead and do a mod podge I like to do that technique um, for myself I, uh, I've done it in the past with uh, some Spartan helmets we go ahead and uh, mod podge everything off and what you do is you go ahead and put the mod podge down and you have to overlap uh, you have to put it in the groove and then overlap it a little bit to where it's on the blue painters tape so it has a good seal and you want to put um, not a lot of Mod Podge in there uh, I usually put um, what, two coats you could probably get away with one but uh, I do two very light coats and it doesn't take long for it to dry either I mean it, it it does a really well it does a really good job with that so we're doing some final weeding here on this treble clef um, after you put the Mod Podge and it's dried then you can go ahead and go back with um, I use some black spray paint and I just sprayed the, 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 the paint the can of paint right on into its lid Worn uh, some gloves when I did that, and then I just go ahead and dip a brush in there and go ahead and put two coats of paint uh, in the groove, and then we let that dry, and that's why we're just now peeling it off. And then when we get this peeled off, and you'll see how how nice it actually comes up. Now some people. Um, we'll not do the Mod Podge. I have seen people do uh, like two coats of lacquer or some kind of uh, finish under the tape. And then I'll put the tape on, on top. Um, and then they'll go ahead and, and, and do their, their cutting. I don't think they put a coat of finish over the tape um, when everything's said and done. I'm not, I have not, I've not seen that, so, but I think I'm going to stick with this Mod Podge um, technique. I mean, it's, it's been tried and true with me, and um, this stuff really does stick. I mean, and then we're going to go back 
and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and sand over this um, make sure uh, we get off all the um, uh, any kind of like adhesion uh, any other like glue residue that the blue painter tape will leave behind but there's not much at all and we'll use a 220 grit on on this particular piece and then what I like to do is clean it off um, nice and uh, and then we'll go ahead and put on I like to use lacquer so we'll put three coats of lacquer on the front uh, to seal everything in and then we'll put uh, two coats of lacquer on the back and then on the back we'll have a um, alligator uh, picture clip that we'll, we'll go ahead and put on the on the back there and that'll finish up our our project here but um, you we do have some things here on the table I want to go over just a little bit we have um, the box fan there in the back that has a uh, furnace filter on the front and as you can tell we've been working with some walnut today as well because it's uh, got quite a bit of walnut that helps uh, get the fine particular um, um, what's the word I'm looking for Partic um, dust particles particulates is what I'm thinking of so there are dust particles in the air and that'll get drawn into there and and not into your lungs while we're doing any kind of sanding or any uh, CNC work that the dust boot doesn't pick up we also have one two three four small little cutting boards there that I need to sand down get finished and then what we do is we wet those after our initial finish and then getting ready for our final sanding. So we'll wet it, let it dry, and then we'll hit it again with 220 grit. And then um, we usually like to um, have a, an oil. We use Howard's oil and with uh, some um, other oil that uh, it's a clearer. Um, it's not a vegetable oil, but uh, it's a conditioning oil. It's clear, and we go ahead and put that final coat on there, um, and we'll let that dry, and then we might do it one more time, but we do actually make our own um, butter board um, paste with that as well with the um, vegetable oil. Um, oh, it's not a vegetable oil. I can't remember the right off the top of my head, but it's a it's a conditioning oil from Howard's that we have, and we're gonna finish this up, getting the final last things out, and we need to do some cleaning of our desk, clean that up, and so I do appreciate it again for you guys to watch this. There is the final product. This is for a treble clef for a student that we made it for so off to finalization thanks for watching